Well, good morning from... Where am I? <laughs> uh, Port Isabel, Texas. Uh, beautiful day. I'm in a Walmart parking lot. So if cars drive by or whatever, that's just nature of the beast. Uh, I woke up this morning with uh, a memory of military training. And I was praying and asking the Lord, why am I remembering this now? It seems out of context. It has to do with moving through the woods silently. It pertains to traveling or navigating terrain behind enemy lines, undetected. So as I was praying and just waiting on the Lord, I was remembering different things that, you know, we were taught, you know, camouflaging, wherever you're going to bed down for the night in your patrol base, you camouflage before you actually, you know, you camouflage where you're at, your surroundings, you make it look like you're not there before you go to sleep and you have a plan about how long you're going to sleep, who's going to be on guard while you're sleeping. And then you rotate. But one thought was um, that God invented camouflage. Looking at the different species of animals and fish and birds, uh, especially the female variety, they are beautifully camouflaged. Um, there's a, a creature down here. It's a cat, medium-sized cat, probably 25, maybe 30 pounder, called the ocelot, O-C-E-L-O-T. They are an endangered species, um, but I see them on the side of the road dead. Um, I've, I've never seen a, an alive ocelot. I've only seen them dead on the side of the road. And uh, they, look, they are spotted with um, orange, black, brown, tan spots. Just a barrage of those different colors. Um, some bright, some dim, some diminished. And, uh, but the terrain they're walking around in, if they lay down, poof, they'd disappear because they'd blend in so perfectly. And then same thing with, let's say, um, you know, the cardinals, the female cardinals are, um, you know, typically brown, brown with, um, black highlights. Um, the, the male variety of birds are typically the very brightly colored ones, like they're going on parade with their fancy schmancy outfits on. Um, and that is by design too. If there's trouble, they'll fly in and distract the predator with their fancy colors and fly away from the female and the babies and uh, essentially lay their life on the line to protect the family. <laughs> That's awesome. Fish do the same thing. I used to scuba dive and skin dive up in the Pacific Northwest. I was at a place called Salt Creek, and I was skin diving maybe down 20, 25 feet, wetsuit and all that fun stuff. And uh, there's a fish called the pilot fish. And uh, normally looking at it, it's just a dark, deep, bluish black fish. But if you get close to its eggs, uh, it will illuminate itself, hence the word pilot fish, with um, luminescent luminescent orange, red, and blue and green spots, just like whoa, glowing. And apparently I was skin diving near where this fish, either it was, it was, I think it was the female I was near in this case, getting near where she was with her eggs and uh, was getting near it. And she illuminated herself and swam, you know, away. And so I was like, that's amazing. And, you know, like a dummy, I'm going to chase after that. And, um, so I swam after it for about, you know, five seconds, and then it, it turned off its illumination effects and disappeared into the dark, but got me far away from her family, her babies. So fascinating. God invented camouflage. Um, there are things that infantry soldiers are taught called the high crawl. 
that's basically you're crawling, you know, like a baby on your hands and knees. That's the high crawl. Then, um, then there's what I call the elbow crawl. I forget what they called it in the army, where you're you're laying down on your belly, but you're on your elbows, scooting along like that. It's pretty noisy. Both of those two are noisy: high crawl and elbow crawl. Then there's the low crawl. That's the quietest of them all, and that's where you're you've got your face against the ground, and your hands are flat against the ground, chest, body, your feet are on your your ankles are rolled sideways, and you are just you're as close to the ground as you could possibly get, and you're moving quite slow. So those are different ways of crawling. Um, there's a point to this. Bear with me. Um, then there's different ways of walking. Uh, we were taught how to fox walk. And if you ever observe how a fox walks in the woods, you probably never have because they're so dang quiet. They could walk right by you in a camp and you wouldn't hear them. Um, it's, it's the nature of how they, they place each foot pad and roll onto that foot, um, testing for things underneath it that might crack or, or make noise, then they'll, they'll adjust to find a, a more quiet, silent place to place their foot before adding um, their weight onto that foot, and then they'll slowly transfer. And so there's fox walk, and, and I've heard of things called raccoon walk and squirrel walk. I don't know. Fox walk was the one that we were really taught. Um, and if you're really good at it, and I never got that good at it, but people can run that way. And, uh, they could run through you, run past you and you wouldn't hear them in the woods because they're so good at fox walking. Then there's what they call SILS. Uh, it's an acronym S L L S stop, look, listen, smell. And if you just, if you watch animals in the wild, I don't care if you're talking possum, guinea hens, chickens, um, you know, squirrels, raccoons, they all do it. They'll, they'll, birds do it too. Uh, they'll stop. You'll see them make a few moves and then they'll stop and they'll put their head up and they'll look around and they're listening. They're sensing, they're smelling. Even snakes do this. Snakes will stop and they'll like, you know, slither out their little creepy little tongue, creepy little fork tongue, and they'll um, wiggle that thing around in the air and they're gathering chemicals in their surroundings, pulling it back into their mouth and uh, that little laboratory can tell them um, a human being placed their foot here four days ago. Uh, a rat walked by one day ago. A mouse walked by an hour ago. Uh, <laughs> snakes do that. That's fascinating. But my point is this. Um, these creatures are aware of their surroundings keenly. And the way they're aware is they keep on stopping, looking, listening, smelling, Situational awareness is key to survival. And if if you're a dumb chicken <laughs> and you look down and you see a shadow and you just keep like, wow, that's an amazing shadow. That's what a dumb chicken thinks. And the next thing that dumb chicken realizes is he has talons puncturing his hide crushing his spine and he's going to be about 50 feet in the air in a matter of seconds dead in the hands of a bird of prey or claws, talons of a bird of prey. Smart chickens look down, see that shadow and they beat feet to cover into the trees and under bushes and under arbors. What kind of Christian are you? Hmm. Oh, they just flipped each other off. <laughs> you gotta love Walmart. Um, what kind of Christian are you? Situationally aware? Or uh, are you oblivious? Are you looking at shadows on the ground that indicate there's a hawk eyeballing you and you're unaware of it you don't know what that shadow means uh are you walking through life tromping along stepping on crushing on you know there's a time and a place to run through the woods and make noise and kick up a ruckus big deal but if the holy spirit is telling you slow down shut your mouth listen 
That takes practice. That's not a normal human trait. Look at babies. Babies are loud little bundles of joy. To become disciplined in the Holy Spirit is one way of looking at it is how still can you be? There's verses in the Bible that says, Be still and know that I'm God. How good are you at that? Um, I want to say that the Holy Spirit is holy. Maybe it sounds dumb to say that. I'm pointing out the obvious. But what does that mean? Uh, you drive by an alcohol shop and they have these signs. As, oh, you know, It says alcohol, wine, and spirits. <clears throat> ah, yeah, spirits. The Holy Spirit is not one of those spirits. He is holy. There's, there's no one like the Holy Spirit. Um, he's set apart, sanctified. Uh, I think it's Luke 17, Jesus is talking. And he said, the Holy Spirit came out from the heart of the Father. That's the Holy Spirit. It's the very Spirit of God. <clears throat> uh, I grew up in a very um, charismatic church. And... Overall, I think it was a great experience. Um, I saw abuses happen, but I also saw miracles happen. Um, saw demonic things happen. But that's part of the life we live here. We're living behind enemy lines on this fallen planet. Um, the Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit, not the party spirit. I think it's easy to get that confused. People act like the Holy Spirit's a party whistle. And let's just grab the party whistle and have a party. That's not the Holy Spirit. There's a time and a place to party. And the Holy Spirit, he rocks the house. Um, but the normal baseline, and this is, I can only speak from my experience, is he's very quiet. He's a gentleman. He's very quiet. He's very sensitive. He's very dialed into what's going on inside of you. And it means a lot to him. If you're hurting, he knows. He's aware. And it, it means a lot to him. And what he does in response is comes from a position of infinite love and wisdom. And his response, oftentimes, is not to remove you from the source of pain, but to grow you through that source of pain. So speaking personally, candidly, uh, I used to be a very hyper person. And, and I say this in the most grateful way, manner and I am grateful blows and wounds cleanse away evil and beatings purge the inmost being the Holy Spirit has taught me to be quiet he's taught me to be still and he's teaching me these things too because you can pray for people better when you listen better you can hear people around you essentially exposing their hearts just by how they're reacting to things around them. The, things stand out when you're listening. If you, I remember once in ranger school, we'd been out in the woods for two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, and every 24 hours, new instructors rotated in. And, uh, this one morning, I caught the whiff of um, maple bacon. And I just kind of put my nose in the air. And um, then I could smell woman's perfume. I could smell air freshener from someone's car. Um, I smelled body deodorant. Um, I smelt, I mean, a variety of things. Uh, I smelt like foot powder. 
you know, like cherry chapstick. I smelled all these things. And, um, and then this instructor walked up and checking on us to see if we were all doing what we're supposed to be doing as students. And I was like, man, this guy, he just came from the house. And I, I can tell you, I mean, I knew a lot about him just because of the smells coming off of him. Because being that long out in the woods, I was dialed into those different kinds of, I was dialed into the wood smell, woods, the smells of the woods. And then when something else foreign was introduced, it stood out like um, <laughs> a Hershey bar in a punch bowl. It just stood out, or a Babe Ruth in a punch bowl. <laughs> um, but I've, I've been finding myself getting more and more quiet. And I've been wondering why. Is there something wrong? And then, almost imperceptibly, the glory and radiance of God fills my truck. And all I can do is just keep driving while tears roll down my face. Without saying a word, the Lord is comforting me. The Holy Spirit's the comforter. And with his response, without a word, I know he's pleased. You know, be still and know that I'm God. I don't know if you're picking up the underlying message I'm saying here. And I'm camouflaging it on purpose. On earth, we are living behind enemy lines. We need to be wise with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need to move through this life with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And if he says, throw a party, party. But if he's saying, be still, you need to be very good at being still. And knowing by the power of the Holy Spirit what is happening around you. And how to react with it. Think about it. If animals didn't do that in the wild, they'd starve or they would become food for a predator. So we need to be wise Christians. Jesus said, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Think about that with snakes. They can tell if... They know what walked by four days ago just by tasting the air. That's how wise a serpent is. And a dove, oh, they're such lovely creatures. How gentle are you? To me, these are very convicting things. I have not got them figured out. Don't think I'm... I'm not saying that. But these are things we need to grow in. And it's exciting. Because the Holy Spirit, he's eager to teach us. And you may not see him, because he's super awesome at being camouflaged. But from time to time, you'll flicker a muscle, and you'll look, and you won't see him. But you'll hear him say to you, I'm here with you, son. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you.